coming up on At Your Leisure. This week, Tail Gunner Brett and I are on the trail again, and this time we're joining the folks from Green River to venture out onto the Tusher Rim Trail. I'm Reese Stein. Coming up, the Utah Division of Wildlife is going to the dogs. I'm Scott Huntsman at my two next shop. Hey, Jeep Wrangler, I've got a great improvement for this engine. Stay tuned. Let's check it out. So many different levels of fun to have. Hi everybody, welcome to At Your Leisure. I'm Chad Booth. And I'm Brett Hermanson filling in for Rhea again. Mm -hmm. uh, we're out here on the Tusher Rim Trail. Yeah, you know what, Brett, sometimes I think you kidnap her or threaten her so she won't go so you can come out and ride these things. Exactly, that's what I do. I just tell her, no, you don't want to go along. It's not going to be any fun. So, <laughs> yeah, but you could, but your wife, Novelle, is here, so yeah. uh, you, didn't, you didn't threaten her, obviously. No, no, I don't threaten her. I like. She's fun to be with, you know. Yeah. She hides in the side-by-side, -side, though. Well, that's all right. <laughs> anyway, we are with a bunch of our local friends from uh, the Green River area, and we are going to go explore a loop that you can take out of Green River and head to the east and basically come back from the west all along the tops of the mountains. This is going to be a lot of fun. That'll be good. Hopefully we've got enough gas for this adventure. So, Well, let's find out a little bit about this trail and what kind of secrets it holds. Today we're on the Tusher Rim Trail. Um, we started by going up Horse Canyon. Uh, right now we're having lunch in Cold Canyon, which is the middle canyon of the loop. It gives an option that if you wanted to make a shorter loop, you could do that. And then we're gonna go on across and down Tusher. Um, it's a, a great scenery loop above town of Green River. It's a pretty easy trail. Anybody can do it with side-by-side -side Jeep four-wheel drive pickup, just a nice scenery loop above town. There are some tight spots right, right along the rim where you can see below. And, it's it's smooth road, but you don't want to go off the edge. There's some petroglyphs, some old cattle cabins, just a lot of the historic agriculture type stuff around here, and just just the scenery. Um, we got the the big bluffs and the rim, and then all the valley below you can see off too. The history, the rocks, the you know you have so many different choices of trail difficulties from what we're doing today, which is just easy cruising, to the Devil's Race Track. You know the other side of the San Rafael Swell. There's natural beauty in every direction. You can go north, south, east, west, and everywhere in between. And there's trails and beautiful places like this. It's uh, very spiritual. Feels like home. So we just kind of ended up st staying here. We traveled along the way. I really love the cliffs, right? And this trail being a part of several trails that that cut up into the cliffs. Um, you, you can drive up these, these beautiful canyons and some of them very deep, you know, several hundred feet. You can come see the, the rock type scenery or you can go up and, and, uh, and see more, almost like a forest. Multiple use, off-road, you know, it doesn't matter whether you're on a dirt bike or a Jeep or a side-by-side -side ATV, we, we wanna see you. And, and there's a, a lot of opportunity in every direction. You know, Chad, if I was from back east, I would want to move here too. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. Okay, so folks, this is not the twilight zone or the outer limits. Do not attempt to adjust your dial. What you're seeing is real. This looks like Bryce Canyon in black and white, but it really isn't. This is part of what you see along the Tusha Rim. And this is a neat rock, I mean, this is- It is really cool. something. It's amazing how, I don't know if you got that right there, where all the rocks are right on top of the the dirt and it just washes all the dirt away. It's really amazing. It's a neat windy trail up through here. You just go right along the rim. This is this is really cool. Well, we're not exactly sure where our trail is going to lead to just yet, but the next turn for you is our where to. I'm Reese Stein at your leisure at the Salt Palace where the dogs are taking over the show.
Corey Lilga is one of five canine officers with the Division of Wildlife Resources who work with dogs to help solve wildlife crimes and much more. So the DWR has dogs. Uh, we use them for detection work, tracking, and then article searches. It's any item that a human may have tossed or thrown. Um, so a lot of times we use them to find a hidden gun or a uh, drop piece of clothing that a little kid could have lost to help us lead to a track. Several of the dogs show off their stuff at the recent Western Hunting and Conservation Expo at the Salt Palace. The dogs currently are doing great. Um, we've made plenty of cases this year and I think our program has been running for about five years, a little over five years with five dogs across the state. Um, and each year we seem to be increasing our deployments or the use of our dogs um, and they're doing well. In the field, the dogs serve many functions, and not just for the Division of Wildlife, but other local law enforcement agencies as well. Uh, but anytime another agency calls us, we get out there, we try to help them any way we can. So uh, most of the time it's looking for an object that a human could have placed somewhere, um, or it could be finding a missed child or missed person. Josh Carver found a 13-year-old kid a number of years back with his dog, um, and then Matt Burgess this year helped locate a, a missing adult subject on the Great Salt Lake dogs and officers train at the three-month-long school in Indiana, where they learn detection, article finding, and tracking. They can quickly find illegally taken wildlife and wildlife parts in vehicles or buildings. Corey's dog found two poached elk carcasses in steep, rugged terrain that would have never been discovered without four paws and an expert nose. Half a mile away, the dog also locates shell casings, indicating two rifles had been used in the shooting. The dogs are rewarded with a treat or a favorite toy, invaluable law enforcement assets. Oh, I think just the enjoyment of having a companion with you every day. Um, it's someone that you can tell your crazy stories to that doesn't laugh at you. Um, they're always at your side. They always want to please us. I have not taken my dog to Starbucks. My wife always tells me I need to go to Starbucks and get him a puppuccino, but where I live out in Vernal, we don't have a Starbucks, so I can't get him a puppuccino. Reese Stein at your leisure along the way at the Saul Palace. Welcome back to At Your Leisure. And welcome to my kitchen. I'm Katie Yardley. I'm Mark Yardley. Today we are going to be making the easiest four ingredients only, which is unlike my nature, but four ingredient beef enchiladas. I got a question. Yes. Uh, why only four ingredients? That's not like you. <laughs> because I know it's very much not like me, but some nights, you know, if you've worked a full day or even if you're out in the mountains, you want something super simple, super easy that you can make lickety split and feed, you know, be able to feed everybody and it doesn't take much time at all. Super easy. That's my new favorite word with cooking, <laughs> easy. <laughs> so today we're gonna start with the Yardley Premium Beef. You wanna put it in your pan and break it up. Just do your ground beef, break it up. And then while you're doing that, we want to add some salt. Once your meat is almost browned, this is when you want to pour approximately half of a can of enchilada sauce in with your beef. Hey honey, so while I'm cooking this, I'm gonna make your whole day. Would you mind grating me some cheese? Oh, I would love to. <laughs> Perfect, thank you, sweetheart. So Mark's gonna grate some cheese for us. There you How go. Much? Probably about half of it. Half? It's, a, it's a cheesy dish. I didn't All say right. a little cheese, a lot of cheese. So he's a happy boy today. Look at that. See how that meat has just absorbed yeah. almost all of that enchilada sauce? Wow. That's where the flavor comes from. We're gonna set this aside and we're gonna hurry and heat the tortillas through. And I usually do about eight tortilla shells for this, probably about 10 seconds on each side. You want to get them nice and pliable so that they'll roll up really good. And then just put about half a can of enchilada sauce over the bottom. This will help keep the enchiladas from sticking and add flavor while doing that. All right, honey, we're ready to assemble these. Wow. Look at those tortillas. Didn't they turn they out look nice? amazing. Let's start with some cheese. Ooh. Honey, I swear there was more cheese there than that that you I, grated. What happened to it? I think Bubba. <laughs> No, I don't think it was Bubba. I think it was my mouse cheese. husband. 
All right, so I'm gonna put a little cheese on the bottom. And then I put a little, just, you don't want too much because you want them to roll up, but put a little, probably about a quarter a cup of the ground beef. And then you fold them over mm. tightly and then roll them up. And then the seam side, you want to put down on the bottom. All right, we're going to keep doing this till we get all eight of our enchiladas in there. And then once we get them in, we'll finish topping them with more enchilada sauce, cheese. I like to put olives on mine before I bake them, so we're going to do that. If you want to do that, great. If you don't, that's completely up to you. But we'll get these finished and then get them in the oven and we'll be eating in no time at all. We'll let those cool off and then also while these were baking, I hurried and put together a few toppings. Sour cream, cilantro, green onions, avocado. Because I know they only have four ingredients, but I have to add more ingredients somehow. There we go. Wow. All righty. Let's see. Ooh, that's a big bite. A little sour cream. It's gonna be hot. Mm. Delicious. Mmm. <laughs> These are fantastic. They are Honestly, very for, good. They're so simple, so easy, and absolutely delicious. You would never know there were only four ingredients in this, unless I told you. <laughs> Anyhow, we'll be right back with more At Your Leisure. Well, welcome back to At Your Leisure. We're out here on the Tusha Rim Trail. We found a cabin for Chad and Rhea to retire in, if she'll go for it. Yeah, probably not, but it is in, it is in my budget. <laughs> there you go. Might need a little sweeping. There's a little, little cow excrement in there. Well, they're just <laughs> testing it out to make sure it's a good retirement home for there us. There you so. go, yeah. Anyway, you know, history uh, just dots the West, every, everywhere you go. And Emory County's no exception. People drive by on the freeway and they look at it and go, yeah, what's out there? But you get out into it and you discover yeah. all kinds of stuff. It's amazing what is out here. Yeah, it is. And you know, what, what has happened recently in Emory County, they went through a public land bill process and they lost a lot of roots, but they maintained a lot of roots and they put some certainty to it. But this is a big problem that we have with, uh, with trails and routes in Utah is that it's sometimes easier for environmentalists to close a trail that isn't used as it is the one that's overused. Yeah, kind of the old use it or lose it real, you know, deal uh -huh. where you want to use all the trails so they don't close any of them. Right. And, and yet even though they lost some trails in it, there are still a lot of places to discover, which is why we're trying to do the Outsiders.Zone project so that you can find new places to go and ride those unused trails. It's important. The importance of expanding out into the lesser used uh, roads and trails and country, not only does it benefit the local communities that those are close to, but rural communities like Green River they still are looking and searching for, for an economic boom or boost that can come from OHV tourism and OHV use. And the value to the user is that they get away from the crowd. They get away from the beat up, speed bumps, whatever you want to call it, and, and the crowds, and they get a better experience. It, not everybody has access to a, a guide like we have today with, with Cody. So, so anything that provides the public with with knowledge and guidance, that's what we need. I think the Outsiders website is a very valuable tool because it provides the average person the ability to go out there equipped with the knowledge they need to have a successful, fun outing. We need people to know where they're, where they're going and they don't end up somewhere where they're not supposed to be. Well, if you'd like to explore some of those less traveled roads and do your part for land access by getting out and exploring new places, you can find out by going to the outsiders.zone, www.outsiders.zone. Our Trail 360 project has maybe 75, 80 maps up. We've got another 100 that we are in the process of uploading. 
and we are adding more all the time. So go explore Utah. Just like this. Just like this. Yep. What do you think of this so far today? A lot of, lot of cow patties around where we're at right now, but this is, this is really something. It's, it's up and down, we're in slot canyons, we're on top of the mountain. It's, it's, there have been a couple, it's about everything. There have been a couple of spots that I'm going, whoo, this is kind of a tight fit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's, it's been, it's been, uh, it's been kind of fun. It's been a neat trail. Highly recommended. Yes. It's almost as recommended as what's up next. Yeah. The along the way. I'm Scott Huntsman here at my two next shop in South Jordan. And we're going to do a little product review on a piece today using Tanya's 2012 Jeep Wrangler. Equipped with the 3.6 Pentastar engine, there are millions of these on the road and that Pentastar engine works great, but there's one little part about it that I think that we could improve on and this product may do it. Let's get this inside. Let me show you what we're going to do today. This is what we're going to install. This is from Baxter Performance. It's a cartridge type oil filter adapter that's going to change the cartridge type oil filter to a spin on oil filter. But what this also incorporates most importantly is a check valve inside this unit that's going to retain oil in the top of the engine to avoid dry starts. When we dry start the engine, sometimes it can take up to 30 seconds before oil would finally reach all these components if it has drained all the way back into the pan. So this device is designed to be a check valve, which is at the very top of the engine, to retain the oil within the cam phasers so that when we dry start again the next time, We've already got the oil sitting at the top of the engine. It simply is pressurized by the rest of the system. So this is really cool because this is something that could really extend and prolong the life of these engines. So very unique design, seems very good. I'm really anxious to try this out. And we will be discarding this. Once we have it set into place, we'll actually tighten this hex screw that will slightly move these threads and lock it into place. So right now we wanna make sure it's just lined up so we get it together and we're gonna put it into initially clock this into place because we have to have access to the Schrader port, which will be ideal right here. And I like that. There's two of these holes, so one of them we're going to plug and the other one we will install the Schrader with. So I think I'll have to install the uh, Schrader once it's in because there won't be room for it to rotate. And there, perfect. Now I can set the hex screw and that locks the unit into the housing. That 90 degree fitting will fit right into a 15 16 box and wrench. And that's how I can tighten that fitting in that very tight enclosed space. Now again, the Schrader valve is there for our oil changing procedure. Very last step of this install. We now have a spin on filter for the top of this assembly. Hand tight. When we go to do an oil change, put a little air pressure on the Schrader valve with about three seconds of air pressure upon it. We'll then push all that oil that's stored at the top of the engine back down to the pan so that when you change the oil, you're changing everything in it. No oil light, that's a good thing. Now I've run the engine and I've checked it to make sure I have no leaks anywhere on the housing and I don't. Everything's sealed up very well. It was actually fairly simple to install. Oil retention avoids the dry start conditions. That can even take care of some of the check engine light issues that some of these higher mileage engines have. So I consider this a really good value for the protection that's going to give. If you have a question about this product, you can send me an email, scott at ayltv.com. Right here, 
Scott at AYLTV.com. I'll answer him just as quickly as I possibly can, but I think this is going to be a home run right here for a lot of you people who have these Jeeps. They make them for the Fords, they make them for the Toyotas, even Subaru engines. All of these to avoid dry startup conditions extend the life of your engine. Hey, for Azure Leisure, I'm Scott Huntsman. We'll see you next time. Comes the rest of the group. Yeah, they were leading up the rear. You weren't tailgunning. That's no, I wasn't tailgunning today. <laughs> Welcome back to At Your Leisure. We're making our way down off of the uh, Tusher Rim Trail, headed towards the river and back to the city of Green River. So we've had a lot of fun today. Yeah, it's been great. We've avoided the rain we're, for the most part. For the most part. It's a little sketchy in front of us, so yeah. we, uh, we may skip the river just in case. But, <laughs> yeah. um, while uh, we got to work our way down there, I think we should just get right to business and talk about next week's show. Next week, Kurt Miles and Jake Anderson from Slick Rock Productions are taking us out for some exciting rock crawling adventures at the winter side by side jamboree in Sand Hollow. Then we're joining the folks from Blanding, Utah, as they take us out on an incredible adventure in southern Utah as we explore the Arch Canyon Trail. Finally, we're joining the guys from Jorgensen's Power Sports as they take snowmobiles up to Fish Lake for a little barbecue adventure at their Meet on the Mountain event. Now, let's take a look at our calendar of events. First up, April 24th through the 27th is the Red Rock Jamboree in Kanab, Utah, which is presented by the Utah-Arizona ATV Club. Visit utazatvclub.org to register today before it's too late. Then, May 24th and 25th at the Millard County Fairgrounds is the Delta Classic Rock Crawl, which is a truly exciting adrenaline pumping event and it's free for spectators to join. Visit deltaclassicrockcrawl.com for more information. Well, that's all the time we have for the show this week. It's been a great time. These are great folks in Green River. You need to come here and explore. But we're not going to make it to the river without the rain. we got to get going. Yeah, it's getting bad. It is. So just remember, there's adventure around every bend. You just got to get out there and find it at, at your, your leisure. leisure. Okay, everybody, run for cover. Get out of here. <laughs>